Okay, so here we go. It's uh, Ron Suchu, and this is uh, the number nine video of my Elwood Blues painting with uh, Elwood on a motorcycle. This is a, a partnership in coordination with uh, uh, Judy Belushi, John's uh, widow, and Dan Aykroyd. And uh, this will take us right through to the end of the production of the, the painting. And uh, right now you see me doing the front forks of the chrome. Uh, we've uh, the last video I did it was a lot shorter than this one this one's going to be a little bit longer because I do want to get through the whole thing and, and describe a few other extra items that we're doing and at the end of it you're going to see uh, uh, there's a special little just a little trick cameo that's going to happen in the painting of a couple of very special people and anyway uh, as uh, when I spoke to Judy Belushi this week, uh, it was really nice to get a chance to talk to her. We haven't spoken for probably well over a year, and uh, since Dan, uh, I, Dan and I spoke uh, about 15 months ago about the painting that then started this whole process rolling, uh, Judy had uh, a t chance to speak to Dan with it, and it was funny because they came up with a title for it, the. Uh, Mo, uh, uh, Mo cycle, right? Uh, the blues Mo cycle, and uh, I kind of chuckled because uh, when she said it to me, I kind of stopped dead for a second and then chuckled, and, and she caught that something was different about it. And then I said, you know, Colleen told me about that uh, or made that name up about two weeks ago, and I kind of gave her a funny look when she said it. So, and Judy says, well, that's what we're going to call it. So, you know, you can borrow it from me if you want. Anyway, borrow it from her. So. Going along here, I guess we're going to have the uh, Elwood's blue, Blues Mo Cycle, you know. Uh, and uh, I'm working on all of this chrome right now. We're going to get through it. The one thing that you see happening uh, is I keep on refining, and uh, those colors that are going in there, when you see them firsthand, they're a little more uh, that t bright tan color that's uh, gleaming down from the, the, the hill and the, the sidelines there. And you know, putting this uh, this ambient light in uh, that's being reflected off the hill and that really makes the uh, motorcycle start to come into into the painting. It actually, I always say, keys it in or locks it into the painting. And uh, the thing that I, the reason I have to go back and forth a lot of times on my detail is because I'm not using uh, in this situation. I'm not using a, an actual photograph that was taken at uh, that spot and uh, that means that I'm, I'm actually uh, using my mind's computer to calculate where all of the different light is going to come and hit the chrome. It's, it's a little involved but as you go along it, it does get uh, it does work out. Now that, that pipe, if you notice that the bright line on the top of the pipe, it, it kind of bothers me and it bothered me enough that if you see the pipe looks like it's tapering, that pipe is not supposed to taper. So here I go, I just did a fix on it right there, see that? And uh, you know, I always say to people, when you're doing a painting and you do make a bit of a mistake, don't worry about it, uh, you can always uh, just work it out. And it usually works out if you put some thought into it. Uh, it's actually a part where a lot of artists go real wrong and they maybe they're doing grass or they're doing something, uh, an effect that they aren't comfortable with and they're not confident with and all of a sudden they start to work at it and work at it and work at it and it keeps on going worse and worse and worse. So in, in that situation, I, I'll tell anybody that when you have a problem that's starting to show up, especially like when you're working on a portrait like I'm going to do in a minute, these things take a long time but you got to sit back and you got to look at it and make sure that you really know what you're going to do with it instead of just messing around with it for four or five hours and ending up frustrated and everything else. This pose really turned out good too. Going to, I don't know if you caught the video, the little video of, of Elwood Blues on the motorcycle, but that natural pose, it really comes out, uh, it really helps. It helps the piece a lot to see something that there's some weight on his elbow and you know, again, as it gets cleaned up and everything else, you're going to find that, that that pose is a very, very realistic one for me. 
So anyway, uh, we're uh, thinking about this in, in as we go into some of these details, you see me flipping back and forth in the detail. And that's actually just putting a little extra paint where I feel it's too light. The, um, we're th probably going to be doing a run of a hundred pieces, uh, assigning a number uh, of these pieces signed by Dan Aykroyd and uh, 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 10 uh, artist proofs and five press proofs. And then what I came up with also is I, I would really like to, because Judy and uh, uh, um, Danny will have uh, some private edition ones, I, I might do a private edition run of about 25. So, you know, people will have an opportunity to go at those. Those are going to be canvas ones, and they'll be all framed and everything. So that's going to be a nice special edition thing. Bit of a high-end piece, probably around the $1,200, $1,250 range. But it will come all framed, all ready to go. And the certificate, I'm going to try and have both Dan and Judy Belushi sign the certificate for the back. So that'd be kind of nice. Yeah. So I know Dan's already uh, antsy to get a, a few of these pieces. He's mentioned that already. So here we are working on the briefcase. Now, if they ever do the real blues mo cycle, then uh, uh, hopefully they'll do a briefcase, but I was kind of thinking that that briefcase would have to be on both sides. So maybe he'll have one for his harmonica and the other side for his little toaster or, and his white bread or whatever, or whatever he, his uh, pajamas, I guess. Eh? So here we got the crystal skull, or crystal head he calls it, crystal head vodka. That's why I put the crystal heads on as turn signal indicators. Now you're starting to see that light. It's the hill. That hill is so important that light coming off that hill to me just makes this whole painting work so beautifully because you, you catch little hints of the, the color all the way through the bike. And uh, and that just makes everything work. It, it pulls it all together. It's like almost like the catalyst in, in a glue. It uh, it makes it all come right in. Now if you see the, the you can see right through the skulls, the one in the foreground, you could see the, the, the strut. And uh, in what I did after a while is you'll start to see the mounts because they didn't, they look like they were glued on there a bit. Well, here we go too. There's a little item that people that have seen this painting haven't really picked up on too much, uh, but he's actually holding his harmonica in his left, hands, his left hand as if he did what our Elwood Blues did at uh, Thunder Road where he, you know, he's been sitting at the side of the road just playing a few bars on the, on the old harp right okay hands hands are important to all you artists out there if the hand isn't right the head isn't right like hands and heads go together and uh, this one this hand I put in here uh, the you know you might not notice right off the bat but the fingers are a little bit on the long side so that did get corrected further into the video and uh, and I mean when you start to compare the head and the hands uh, I'm not going to do a Donald Trump thing here, but the the Dan's got the perfect proportion hands for his head. So, and you know, you have to make sure and be very very careful that you're you're deciding on the right sizes for those to to fit together right. If the hands too small, it'll look silly. Uh, uh, when I did the uh, magic bus painting. <laughs> Bob Weir's hands are monstrous hands. He almost looks like he's wearing baseball gloves. Oh, there's the Elwood Blues tattoo. And with Bob Weir, I actually had to reduce his hand size from his natural hand size. Now here's that blockiness. This is going to go, hopefully, not too slow for you. But there's a. this is going to take me about seven to eight hours to get this face to look pretty good. And, uh, well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not... I was going to say not too good at it. It's just, it's. I like to ha make sure that when you walk up, you're not going to miss that it is uh, Dan Aykroyd. And what I've done with this one is Dan Aykroyd. I've got a picture of Dan Aykroyd, but I don't have the right light on it. And as an artist, that's that's so tough. It's not funny. Uh, you know, we don't have computers for brains. We have to actually work at it until it starts to look natural. And you see right now, he almost looks like uh, he's got the Homer Simpson look happening here. But anyway, as uh, it goes along here, I'm nursing it because I'm changing the light from the photograph I'm working from. And if I change the light wrong, let's just say the, the cheeks will be too puffy, the, the chin might look like it's protruding, 
protruding too far out. His nose might look like the wrong shape or whatever. And if you just keep on, I find you just keep on nursing it very, very slowly. And uh, you see his lip looks like it's swollen a bit there right now. That uh, You keep on watching that and it comes together. In time, it starts to look more and more like Dan Aykroyd. The glasses are roughed in. So I will actually, as I go along, I'm going to clean up the glasses. And you're going to be able to see through that one on the right, on your right hand side. You're going to be able to see through it in a, in a second. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like Dan. And uh, I, I actually, portraits can be, they can be flustering. They, you know, if you ever watch any good portrait artist, you work at it and you work at it and you work at it. And then you put one little spot of paint and you just change the whole thing. And you got to be careful at that point to either back off or you better be knowing what you're doing at that point. So even the lip right now, the lip doesn't look quite the way it should, but there you go. See, there's a little bit of darkness put in there. It's really, really part of the life. In the final, at the back end of this video, you're going to see this whole thing done. So for me to um, show you this for the next five minutes, I'd lose you for sure because it, it becomes extremely boring. But now all of a sudden you start to see the light through the, the glasses on the right hand side. And uh, it's funny, I, I changed the um, hat tilt on Dan and uh, realized that I, I, you don't see it here, but I had to actually go back and, and, and reverse it because it Although this is not exactly the way Dan always wears his hat. He doesn't usually pull it down so far. Uh, when I did it his way, it just didn't work on this painting at all. It's something as subtle as that. Now that red on the side of Dan's cheek, on his left side, again, and that light ha happening is that hill. That hill's doing it every time. And uh, I think it's just a, it's a beautiful thing to have happen when you get this light that's c coming in like this. So, oh, look at this. I call it finished. Now, the painting, I will actually dabble in a little, few little pieces once in a while. So there we go. Now, I'm going to pull right into Dan Acker, and you see what I ended up with here. I softened the, all of that work down a little bit, and I think that looks pretty, pretty good. I'm sure Danny will like it. It's not the real young Elwood, and it's not the 2000, uh, the movie 2000 Elwood. It's somewhere in between. I, I was thinking about this as, like, you know, in the movie, uh, they went to jail in the first movie, so Danny's out on his own somehow, and I think at this point uh, we lost Jake. So um, that's his big road, road trip on his, on his Harley. Now, if you look on the right-hand side, let's, let's zoom in here. Uh, very, very rough. It's very tiny. These, these characters are only about an inch tall, and here we see Peter Fonda, and Dennis Hopper, and they just passed by Elwood, and they probably gave him a, a thumbs up and uh, kept going down the road. Anyway, that's our, my little easy rider thing. So here we go. Uh, zooming in. Oh, one thing I, I did pop in there that you didn't see me do was the, the handcuff. The handcuff's kind of fun because it goes down the briefcase and it gets kind of pulled in. And... Uh, Look at the edges. Colleen commented as soon as she saw how the edges of the briefcase were worn out. There's Danny's badge again. And now his fingers are a little bit shorter. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, there's your painting, guys. So anyway, uh, the next paint, the video you'll see, we'll be doing a production uh, video so that we can actually uh, uh, show you the how we're going to sell it and when it's going to be done and everything else. Okay, hey, I really do appreciate it, and then please do me a favor, comment. If you're worried about me being embarrassed with your comments, or if you feel you're going to embarrass me, you're not going to do that. I would really like to hear from you. I know this video is a bit long. I hope it was the right one. But but please, if you do, uh, even if you want to email me, email me at suchu at suchu.com. I will catch it, and I would do my, my best to make sure everything works as good as we can for you. Okay, so take care. Until next time. Be good, and we'll see you later, guys. Bye-bye.
जी इसके पे